also as worship leaders. They were representatives. Their lives were to be a living example for the community. They were to be a shining example for everyone to see. You know, what does it look like to honor and to respect God? Look at the priesthood. Not only were they uh, to be representatives, they were teachers of God's word. They held on to God's word. And they were there to communicate to the people exactly what God was communicating, what God wanted, what God, uh, what God expected as teachers of the word. They were facilitators of spiritual maturity. They helped people to grow in their maturity. You know, they started off small, they didn't know a lot, but they were to help people make steps towards growing and maturing and honoring God more the next day than they did the previous day. This was part of their role, the priesthood. And then lastly, they were there to resolve, resolve disputes. You think about the people, they were just like us. They had disputes. They had issues. Especially uh, when you, you bring, uh, they were coming out of slavery, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Israelites, and they had been in slavery for a number of years, and now you got one million, a couple million people all together. You're going to have some disputes. And so the role of the priesthood was instituted so that they could help people get along. They can help resolve the conflict between one another, but also the conflict between them and the outside world. What an amazing role. What a high, high calling to be a part of this priesthood. And what Peter is communicating is that you are priests. You all are collectively a part of the priesthood. When you make Jesus Lord, what once was just a few select people is now your role as the people of God. Your role is now to help resolve disputes. Your role is now to help facilitate spiritual maturity, to be teachers of God's word, to be representatives so when people look at your life, they see you as a living example, to be mediators, help calling people. No, we don't... Uh, um, uh, do the sacrifices in the way they did, right? Jesus was the ultimate, uh, the ultimate sacrifice, the, the ultimate, he gave his life for our sins. Now our role as mediators is to point people to Jesus. This is the role of the priesthood. What I want to emphasize for you this morning is that angle mirrors is not about you individually, it's about you joining the priesthood. It's about you living out and coming together alongside the person next to you so that collectively we can live out God's calling for our lives. Your Christianity is not for you alone. You cannot, by definition, if this is what it means to be a Christian, you can't do it for who. It's impossible. Yes, there is personal responsibility. Yes, it's a personal decision that you must make, but it's lived out collectively. You with me, church? This is what this is our calling. And if you like me, you understand that man, this is a high calling. But oh my goodness, this is God's solution to the chaos in this world. You know, it continues. And uh, uh, chapter 2 of 1 Peter, verse 9. But God shows you his people. You are royal priests. You are a holy nation. You're God's special treasure. You are all these things so that you can give him praise. God brought you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people. You know, that's the truth. Once you weren't a people, once we were separated from God, at one time we weren't a part of the priesthood, but now it says, now you have received mercy. Dear friends, you are outsiders of those who wonder in this world. 
So I'm asking you not to give in to your sinful desires. They fight against the soul. People who don't believe might say you are doing wrong, but believe good lives among them. Then they will see your good deeds, and they will give glory to God on the day he comes to judge. It says, once you were outsiders, but now, but now God has called you, and he's, and he's, and he's asking you, and he's uh, expecting you to do good, so that when people see your lives, it's not about you. What is it about? It's about that they may glorify God. You know, when you think about the role of the priesthood, again, my point, I keep emphasizing and repeating myself, why? Because I want us to get it. It's not about you individually, but it's about us. One of the challenges that we have in reading the Bible as uh, these, uh, Westerns? As Westerns. <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as, uh, that we, we tend to read the Bible through our own lens. So we very individualistic lens. You know, and when it's talking about you are chosen, it's not talking about you individually. It's talking about you collectively. You collectively are a chosen individual. Am I a chosen individual? Absolutely. But only in respect to the collective group. You are a royal priesthood. And that's one of the challenges as we read the scripture and as we live out our Christianity is that we're thinking about the person next to us. We're thinking about how am I doing in relationship to the person next to me. How am I doing in my shared purpose? Am I living out a shared, not just my purpose, but how, are we living out a shared purpose? Am I serving in the community next to the person that I call my brother or sister? Am I living out my calling? Am I forgiveness? What does my relationship look like? Is there a deep level of intimacy with the people that I am doing life with? Am I even doing life with the people that I call brothers and sisters? You know, one of the things that I think is challenging for us is uh, we have what we call small groups, right? And um, as we think about these small groups, we've decided as a, as a Kansas City church that we're going to uh, uh, divide ourselves in the small group community and allow God to reflect us through these relationships. And one of the things that I've seen that's kind of challenging is we've kind of, um, I don't want to say dumbed down, but we've kind of simplified these uh, small groups and limited the impact of our small groups because it's become about what we do once a week with a group of people. We come together on a Thursday or Wednesday, whatever night your small group might meet, and uh, you have a lesson, and you have some great fellowship, and you have some great conversation, and that's pretty cool, right? But that's not where the game is won. When the Bible talks about community, it's talking about the people that you do life with throughout the week. So when you think about your small group community, it's talking about your daily rhythm, your parenting. Are you parenting alongside the people in your small group? Are you uh, 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 connecting with them in God's word together throughout the week? Are you praying and calling out to God together throughout the week? Are you working through the challenges in your life with those people throughout the week? That's what it looks like to be a reflection of Jesus as a community. It's a day, our daily rhythms, our lives intersecting enough so that when people see us, us, collectively, they see Jesus. If you're always alone in your Christianity, then people don't see a us. All they see is you. And one of the challenges when we live life that way, we can tend to think of, you know, uh, the reflection of Jesus, it becomes about me personally and about how I'm doing. Now, that's important in terms of how you're doing and how you're growing and your connection. But your reflection and how you reflect Jesus is not just about, it can't be just attributed to you personally. 
after last week's lesson, I had a number of conversations with different folks, and one of the things that they felt was guilty. Man, I can't be, I'm not good enough to reflect Jesus. I'm not wise enough. I'm not uh, perfect enough. I'm not doing well enough to reflect Jesus. And while I think there's an aspect of our spiritual maturity, that's the wrong thing. Because when it becomes just about you, you lean and you devalue the person next to you. And so the challenge for us as a people, as we are called to live out life as angle bearers, is to consider how am I doing in relationship in my small group? How am I doing in relationship to the people that I'm doing life with? Am I being an image bearer next to the people that I call my brother and sister? You cannot live out your Christianity in isolation. David, ben, David Spangler said, some people think they're in community, but they are only in proximity. You see, we can be here at church and not really be part of community. You can attend a small group and not really be part of the priesthood a little bit in that it's what some people might call sit and get. You come, you sit, and you can get something. You're sitting around, and it's about what you take. Versus coming to invest in the person next to you. Coming to serve God alongside the people we call brothers and sisters. There's power in the collective coming together as God's people. We're a more accurate picture of Jesus together than we are apart. My challenge for us this week is for you to have some conversation with the people that you're doing life with. Whether it's a couple of people or your entire group come together. I won't micromanage how you do it. What I'm asking you is to come together and have some conversation about how can we reflect Jesus together. That's the question I want you to consider. And I want you to ask this week. How can we reflect Jesus together? Maybe that's uh, serving in the community together. Maybe that's collectively coming together to share God's word as teachers. Maybe that's pointing people to Jesus together. Maybe that's resolving conflict, working through something. You have some issues or you know of someone that has some issues. And you're going to collectively come together, two or three of you or whatever, so that you can help move the needle in helping those individuals to be unified in Jesus. Or maybe it's about together coming and making an impact to the poor and the needy. You know, we, uh, we we're in the middle, we're closing out our generous project, and what we decided was that we would establish these community projects where collectively we can make an impact in the lives of others. Here in a second, we're going to have them uh, go ahead and queue up this video and uh, communicate to us and remind us of the ways in which we decided as a community we can make an impact. 